I'd like to thank all the organizers for the invitation to this event. The broad topic I want to speak about is the science and the technology of intelligence. Intelligence is a great problem in science. Probably, I believe, the greatest of all great problems in science. So the question is, where are we in the science and the engineering of intelligence? Where is artificial intelligence and our understanding of the brain going to go? That's the topic. And uh, um, the AI and the machine learning have made a lot of progress over the last 25 years, and especially during the last decade. Two major success stories are AlphaGo, uh, DeepMind, now part of, in, of Google, and Mobileye, now part of Intel. Um, DeepMind, Demis Asabis, Mobileye, Amnon Sashua, they were both uh, postdocs of mine. I'm very proud of them. Now, the first success story, uh, DeepMind success story, shows that machine learning can learn to play games such as chess or Go and be better than human champions of them. So AI is beating humans in the virtual world of games. And the second success story really shows that machine learning can do tasks that trained humans do in the real world, like driving a car. Let me open a short parenthesis here, which has to do with a project we did a long time ago between my group and Daimler, so Mercedes, in Germany. We uh, had the computers in the trunk of a Mercedes, and this is a video from it. Um, and the system we had installed was trained to detect pedestrians. Um, we're very proud of it. it made only three mistakes or so per second. This means every 10 frames, one mistake. Um, now, this was very good at the time, but um, of course it was three errors per second. You don't have any reasonable applications for it. Mobileye in the meantime, probably has one error every 100,000 kilometers of driving or less. So you have an improvement over 20 years or so of 1 million times in accuracy, 10 to the 6, which means that accuracy has doubled every year for about 20 years. That's why machine learning has invaded every day's life. Now, at the core of this success story of DeepMind and the one of Mobileye are two algorithms, reinforcement learning and deep learning. And uh, uh, let me first speak about uh, deep learning. It's kind of interesting that um, we still don't know why it works as well as it does. It may seem strange to some of you, but deep learning was an empirical and accidental discovery, and we did not have a theory until now. This is not unusual in science. Electricity was discovered by Alessandro Volta in 1800, but it took 60 years or so before Maxwell developed a theory which unleashed its full power. Um, I do not want to spend much time on a rather technical topic of why deep networks work despite fitting the training set. Um, but we have now a understanding of uh, a number of interesting properties of convergence and generalization for deep learning. And so, um, we're beginning to have a theory, and this is going to be very useful for understanding um, what we're doing when we use deep learning to simulate the brain or to uh, develop real useful applications. Now, let me close this technical parenthesis and go to the next step um, about the problem of intelligence and where, which breakthrough, breakthroughs do, you, do we need in the future? And systems, despite all the success stories, uh, we're still very far from human intelligence. 
DeepMind uh, Alpha Zero, the program, plays superhuman chess, but will not notice if there is a fire in the building. Um, it's like one of us with advanced Alzheimer unable to survive without 24 seven care. Or look at the problem of motor control, uh, robotics. Um, this is from um, a DARPA competition in robotics. And you know, robots are pretty pathetic at very simple tasks like opening a door. And, uh, um, especially if you compare this to human children, um, or even, you know, human babies. So we have a long time to go, a long way to go. And you, you can ask, um, where are the next breakthroughs coming, going to come from? My personal belief is that a good chance is that several of them will come from neuroscience, from understanding how the human brain creates intelligence. Um, my belief is that we need first the natural science of intelligence, neuroscience, cognitive science, in order to get to the engineering of intelligence. Both reinforcement learning and deep learning come, in fact, from neuroscience. Um, reinforcement learning starts with Pavlov and Donald Hebb, deep learning with Huber and Wiesel, and models like Fukushima. HMAX and more recently, uh, rice nets. So um, this is why we started the Center for Brains, Minds and Machines several years ago, um, really with the goal of combining um, natural science of intelligence, cognitive science and neuroscience with computer science and machine learning. And we are going to try to establish an institute for the science and engineering of intelligence with um, the mission of making progress in understanding how the brain makes the mind, how the brain works, how to build intelligent machines with the belief that the science of intelligence is needed to build an engineering of intelligence of the future. Let me come to the final topic here, which is about what are the big questions right now? Um, first answer is there are many, because intelligence is not really one problem, but many problems. And uh, uh, I want to mention one question in particular, which, has, which is what are the neural circuits underlying human intelligence? Um, human intelligence is a sense of logic and language. Circuits that make our brain different from the brain of insects and mice. So I do not have an answer, but here are a couple of ideas of where to begin to try to look for an answer. And let me start with an historical note. There was a paper in 69 published by Christopher Longe Higgins and David Wilshaw in nature, showing how you could build uh, a network um, what, which was an associative memory, able to uh, store items like a vector xi associated with an output vector yi for many i's. And uh, it turns out that this network, especially used in a recurrent way, as David Wilshaw did, um, is really very similar to deep networks, the current deep networks today. And um, in general, associative memory is a lookup table um, that provides you, as I said, uh, YI with XI. Uh, and uh, most machine learning system that we have today, this includes deep learning and kernel based techniques are really um, just a lookup table, maybe souped up lookup table that can associate a, 
an answer y to an input x, even if x is not one of the training example, provided is similar to some of the training example. That's what deep learning and kernel machines do. And that's obviously, I say obviously, but one can prove it, is not enough to really uh, explain the kind of intelligence we need for language or logic. So the claim is um, deep networks or um, simple networks or radial basis functions uh, are not enough to explain human level intelligence. So the question is, what did evolution discover um, in addition to associative memories from in addition to reflexes in order to have a more powerful computational system? And my proposal is one of many, is that what evolution may have discovered is a recurrence and hidden states. If you add those two things to an associative memory, you have a Turing machine, which is you know, as powerful as um, we know any system to be today. So, um, so the interesting question is to find to find um, correlates of this hypothesis or similar hypothesis um, that tell us which uh, neural circuits are present in uh, in the brain, which neural circuits evolution has discovered that really creates human level intelligence capable of their lying, for instance, language. Um, so that's the one of the basic questions. Where are these circuits for intelligence? What are they? Uh, and this, I think, is a key question for the future of AI and uh, neuroscience. Let me summarize what I said. Um, I spoke about AI, the emergence of a theory for deep learning. I told you that understanding and replicating intelligence will require several breakthroughs, that my personal bet is that several of them will come from the science of human intelligence, from neuroscience. And finally, I told you that it may be a good idea in order to find out which neural circuits and underlie our intelligence to try to reconstruct how evolution may have evolved associative reflexes towards intelligence. Thank you.